Hey, welcome back. In this video, this video is actually going to be really, really fun. It gets me super excited when I can do equation derivations. And in this video, I'm actually going to split this into two parts. And we are going to derive this really beautiful equation that encapsulates Pascal's principle in hydraulic systems and specifically in hydraulic lifts. So in the previous video, we were looking at this hydraulic system where you had a small piston on the left and a larger piston on the right and you could apply a force of f1 downwards on the smaller piston and that would increase the force or really the pressure throughout this system to be able to lift up a really big object like a car and we use the concepts of force multiplication and hydrostatic pressure to basically get an equation that would tell us what force 2 is based off of H, based off of these two pressures along the same line here. And that equation was right here. We found out that force 2 is equal to force 1 multiplied by some force amplification factor or a force multiplying factor which was this a2 over a1 the ratio of area 2 the piston area 2 over the piston area 1 minus rho gh times the area of piston 2. So we're going to continue on with this and try to derive this equation. Now this equation is this delta force. So what this is is the additional force needed by F1 to be able to raise the piston 2 by a amount D2. So what is the additional force required to be able to push piston 1 down so that we can raise piston 2 by some amount D2 and that is D2 right there. So we want to be able to raise this car by some amount D2. Two. And that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to try to derive this equation based off of what we learned in the previous video with this equation and a few new concepts that I'll explain in part one and part two. So get your snacks ready, or really I should say notebooks, and let's start. Okay, a couple quick notes. I just rewrote the equation here of what F2 is for this particular system. And by the way, the notes for this derivation, all of my work can be found in the description below. So if you want to check out the actual paperwork that I did for this derivation, you can do so in the description. Now, a couple other notes. This state of the hydraulic lift is in hydrostatic equilibrium. So Force 1 really is just enough force to balance F2. This H is not changing yet because we're not adding or moving any forces around. So this car that's sitting on piston 2 is at rest. So the entire system itself is static for now. Uh, and that the fluid contained inside the hydrostatic or hydraulic lift is incompressible. So rho, which is the mass density, is constant. Okay, so the very first thing I want to do is I want to call this hydraulic system state A. So this is the first state that we're going to be studying. And remember, this equation that we're looking at, that we're trying to drive, this delta F is not F1, but it's the additional force that we need to add to F1 so that we can move piston 2 up by a amount D2. So this delta F is an additional force that we're going to apply over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this diagram over to the blank side here and I'm going to call that state B and I'll explain why and hopefully the pictorial representation of what state B looks like will help us derive this equation. Okay, so by the power of the magic of technology, this right here is going to be state B. So what is state B? So let's say we want to move piston 2, which is this piston right here, up by an amount of D2. So I want to move this piston up by, let's say, about that much right there. And this distance right here is what I'm calling D2. Now, in order to get that to work, I have to move piston 1, which is this piston here, 
down by a larger amount. Why? Because area one, this piston is smaller. So I have to move a lot more liquid here to be able to move this small amount on piston two up by D2. So let's say I moved F1, or sorry, the piston one down by this amount. So now the piston is actually here, so I've moved it down by this larger depth D, which I'm going to call D1 for piston one. So you can see here that D1 is actually a lot bigger than D2. D1 is a lot bigger than D2, and that makes sense, right? Because piston one is smaller, so you have to move a lot more further downward to get piston two to go up by even just a small amount. So really what I'm talking about this concept of moving a longer distance down is really just what we call the energy conservation or the conservation of energy. There is work being done on this fluid contained inside of this hydraulic lift by this very small force F1 to be able to move piston two up by a small amount. So if force one is smaller, D1 has to be larger. And that means force two is gonna be larger, but D2 is gonna be smaller, right? The conservation of energy. We have a small force and a small area really pushing down by a large distance, this D1, and that's able to push force two, which is a very big force, up by just a small amount D2. Now I want to look at these two distances right here and what that pink or purple shaded area right here, they are really actually volumes, right? So if this piston was just a circular piston, right, the area is pi r squared, the volume that piston one has to push down, so I'm gonna call that V1, so this volume, which is all of this volume right here, that's volume one. This is gonna be equal to A1, which is the area of the piston, times D1, right? Area times distance gives us volume. Now, volume two, which is this volume right here, this is going to, I'll just call V2, and that's gonna be equal to, well, A2 times D2, right? Area times distance. Now, what do we know about this hydraulic system? Well, it's in equilibrium, it's in hydrostatic equilibrium, mass density is uh, constant, so the liquid itself or the fluid is incompressible. And by the principle of energy conservation, we know that V1 and V2 are going to be equal to one another, right? V1 is equal to V2. And that makes sense, right? Whatever you push down on piston one, that liquid is going to get displaced somewhere else. And in this case, it's gonna be over here by piston two. We actually have this equation A1 D1 becomes or is equal to A2 D2. Now this is gonna be a really important equation along with this equation here from state A. And we're gonna use both of these equations to figure out what this additional force is to be able to move piston two up by an amount of D2. So I will see you guys in the next video.